In this video, we'll learn how to program 3D graphics with binary space partitions. We'll learn the basics of 3D rendering, such as how to build a binary space tree and how to render a scene by means of a tree traversal. 3D rendering has a wide variety of applications. These include graphic artwork, first-person games such as Doom and Quake, real-time 3D simulations such as virtual reality and flight simulations, animations, and movies. We'll first take a look at some other 3D rendering algorithms and see how they compare to a binary space partition in terms of efficiency and rendering speed. The two we'll look at are the painter's algorithm and the ray casting algorithm. The basic requirement common to all these algorithms is that the objects to be rendered be kept in a data file. For simplicity, we'll look at only how a set of walls can be rendered from a two-dimensional map, shown here from overhead. The black dot represents the viewer and the two lines represent the field of vision. So how might we render a 3D scene based on this data? In a moment, we'll see how this is done with a binary space partition, but let's first look at how this is handled in the painter's algorithm. In the painter's algorithm, the most distant wall is rendered first. Following that, closer and closer walls are rendered until eventually the entire scene is painted. The painter's algorithm goes from back to front, and every wall lying within the field of vision of the viewer is drawn. As a consequence, there's lots of overdrawing. This consumes CPU cycles and slows down the rendering process. Look how many walls we had to paint before we finally replaced them with a green wall. Raycasting doesn't suffer from the same penalty. In this algorithm, we fire a beam at the left side of the screen until it hits a wall. We then continue firing beams toward the right until the entire scene is drawn, using a longer stripe for a closer wall and a shorter stripe for a farther wall. Raycasting goes from left to right. While it requires no overdrawing, we must obtain the closest wall for each beam fired. This typically involves checking the intersection of each beam with every wall in the viewing area to find which wall is closest. Additionally, one beam must be fired for every X coordinate on the screen, making ray casting slower on high resolution systems. Now we'll see how a binary space partition overcomes the difficulties associated with the painter's algorithm and ray casting. What we'd like to do is paint every wall from front to back so that the rendering process looks something like this. The number of CPU cycles used is highly reduced, which makes a binary space partition a fast and efficient approach to 3D rendering. Because we paint only the walls that are visible, no overdrawing is needed. So how do we get this to work? In order to inform our engine of which walls to draw first, we take our map file before the engine is started and use the existing walls to divide space into halves. As we're doing this, we're also keeping a record of the way space is being divided into a tree data structure. This data structure, when completed, is what is formally known as a binary space partition. The result is that space is partitioned into a collection of disjoint polygonal regions represented by the nodes on the bottom of the tree. Now we watch how this tree is used to render walls in front to back order. We begin by finding out which region of space the viewer is in. This is accomplished with a binary search. In this example, we found the viewer in node 42. Now we move upward to node 2. This node contains a wall immediately adjacent to node 42, the green wall of our earlier illustration. We paint the wall and move down to node 43. Node 43 has two children, node 44 and node 45. Our task now is to determine which of the two nodes is closer to the viewer. After a simple calculation, we determined that node 44 is closer. We perform the same test again and again down the tree until a node at the bottom is reached. This gives us the next closest region of space. Now we move up to node 46. 
This contains the back of the green wall. Since we already painted over this region of the visual field, there is no need to draw it. We continue this process by stepping through all nodes of the tree, drawing any visible walls that are encountered. Notice how the traversal carefully fans out from the location of the viewer. The binary space partition is specially designed to draw the closest wall first, followed by remaining walls in increasing order of distance. After painting the yellow wall, we stop. The entire field of vision has been encompassed. We repeat this process for every frame of animation. On a side note, you may be wondering how we drew the walls in such a way as not to overlap, and how we knew when to finish. To do this, we keep an ongoing list of horizontal scan lines to indicate which parts of the screen have already been drawn over. Anytime we draw a new wall, we draw only the section of the wall visible through the existing scan lines, and then merge that scan line with the list. When we end up with a single scan line spanning the entire screen, our rendering is finished. This concludes our introduction to 3D rendering with binary space partitions. Much of what we've discussed here extends by analogy to higher dimensions. For a more detailed account, check out Developing Games in Java by David Brakeen.